Say your name is Marion Courtney. Yes. And you're not a resident of this state. I am not. Do you mind telling the court why you came here? I've been here nearly a month, visiting friends. Oh, merely a pleasure trip, eh? Why, yes. You made the acquaintance of a young man since your arrival. And several young men. I mean a certain young man. His name is Jeffrey Powell. That's what he told me. He caused that man to fall in love with you. I had nothing to do with that. No? No. Courtney, need I remind you you're under oath? Look out of that window. Do you see that? That's the Bridge of Sai. That leads from this building to the tomb. A perjurer can walk across it in ten seconds, but it takes ten years to return. Now, do you dare deny that you led Jeffrey Powell on? That you flirted with him scandalously? I... That you used every siren's wile, every feminine trick to ensnare him? No, no. That you made him your servant, your slave? Answer that question. Please, Your Honor. You must answer that question. I can't. I can't. Will you... Uh, will you uh, have dinner with me tonight, Marion? Why, Jeff? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing that I didn't keep you waiting any longer. He'd have wrung a confession from you. <laughs> On a date for dinner tonight. <laughs> you would not. I'm having dinner with you and your wife, Judge. Good. Well, I'm supposed to be your house guest. I've spent nearly all my evenings with him. I object, incompetent, irrelevant, and I love you. Oh, boy, Jeff. Uh, <clears throat> objection sustained. The court awards the custody of the defendant to the prosecution. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> we'll have dinner to Thornton, and we'll go to the new show, and on the way home, I'll propose to you again. And I'll say no again. Oh, but someday you'll say yes. You'd better give in. He's the best prosecutor in the district attorney's staff. Oh, all right. You mean you will marry me? I'll have dinner with you. Keep oh. after her, Jeff. She's weakening. I will. I'll be by for you at 6.30. In the meantime, you can practice saying, oh, this is so sudden. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hello. Hello, Teddy. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> Did the husband of mine keep you waiting long? Not long. I didn't mind. Yeah, not with Jeff Powell to keep her company. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to the old matchmaker. Oh, well, I found a pretty good husband for you, didn't I? <laughs> and Marion's a prize. Good family. Well, prominent father and not too homely. Oh, Teddy. <laughs> oh, uh, here's another one of those letters for you. Oh, thanks. She's going after that Jeffrey Powell again. Oh, I'm really? terribly sorry about she that. She sorry at all. She begged him to invite her. I didn't do anything. And ordered promise. him to be here at half past six. Oh, but oh, oh I know, I know. I'll have the hittable help you so you won't be late. And you come along and quit pestering the child. Well, it's a disgrace the way she pursues the boy. Just the way you ran me down and what? made me... Oh, well, that's what I'm lovely weather we've been having. And who do you think is going to win the election? What? Never say what. Say, I beg your pardon. I'm changing the conversation. Mm. Uh, I prefer traveling by air myself. Just I've always claimed it pays to buy only the best. There I stood on the 18th green. With only 289 shopping days left. Uh, the irony of it all. Speaking of shopping days, I was doing some shopping myself this afternoon. And I said to myself, says I, one of these days she's going to say yes. And when she does, I want to be ready. So? Oh, not now, Jeff. Well, I've waited so long, then. You've only known me for three weeks. I've been proposing for two of them. Jeff. Yeah. I can't answer you now. Really, I can't. Why can't you? Reasons. Reasons? What reasons? I can't tell you that either. 
You know I'd like to say something very inelegant. Okay, go ahead. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> Jeff, would you mind getting my compact? I left it in the pocket of your overcoat. Sure. Sorry. Mary. Oh, but it's good to see you. And you too. I've been looking everywhere for you. I've so much to tell you. We can't show here. Too many people. And uh, I have friends waiting for me. I'll wait. I'll call you tomorrow. Where are you staying? At the Blazer. Then you will call me, won't you? Promise me. Of course I will. Goodbye. Hello. 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 Uh, Harry. I thought I'd find you here. Just leaving. Look, Mr. Harry, I want to talk to you about this. Quiet, will you? Quiet. Is your war paint on me? Thanks. Miss me? Tremendously. Liar. <laughs> well, what about it, Sally? I told you if you'd see me next week, I'd kiss you in. But what about that? Right, listen. We'll wait in the cab if you don't mind. All right. It cost you waiting time. Okay. One, five, one, five. Land back. Land back. Don't crowd. Land back. Well, here. Follow me. Don't crowd. Follow me. 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 Follow I'm afraid our date's a wreck. The man's been killed. It's a nasty mess. I'll have to take charge. That's all right, Jeff. I understand. I'll get your cab. Well. Taxi. Who waits for? Cab taken. Sorry, miss. Good night, dear. Then the young guy yanks the Roscoe and wham! Then he shoves the gas to the dame and blows. He what? He pokes the gun to the scoit and scrams. Ducks. Powders. Can't you understand English? Her talk at that. What does she do with the gun? Nothing at voice. Then she pokes it in a voice. And then she and the dude with it come down in the cab. It's the same story that the taffy peddler told. Yeah. Let's talk to the woman in the gun. Right. Can I scram now? No, not yet. You wait in the next room. And keep your gap shut. Okay, Chief. But the meter on the cab's running. Somebody's going to give me what I got coming. I wish I could give it to you, my lad. Oh, how I wish I could. Come on. Miss Thane, Mr. Norman, will you step in now, please? Yes, sir. Not yet, miss. But I've been waiting simply for hours. It won't be much longer. I don't know what my gentleman friend will think my being here so long uh, with all you men. I'm afraid you're perfectly safe. I'm afraid so, too. Thank you. Now, we'd like to have your account of what occurred tonight. Nathalie and I used to meet at the Thornton every Thursday night. Why did you? Well, uh... Oh, come on, open up. This is no gambling prosecution. Thanks. Well, to arrange a little friendly game. West had played with it a few times. He knew about the Thornton. He was going to play with you tonight. No, that's why he was mad at Maselli. Clear that up a little bit, will you? Oh, West was a piker player. 
He'd lost to Miss Ellie and wanted a chance to get his own back. Miss Ellie was sick and tired of his whining and refused to bring him along with us. West insisted. The boy was... I mean, he'd been drinking. I don't think he realized. West followed us out of the restaurant. When we got to the top of the steps, he swore at Miss Ellie. Struck him and Miss Ellie struck back. Then West pulled a gun, fired and ran. What did he do with the gun? He thrust it into my hand. Oh, into your hand? I was frightened. Things happened so unexpectedly. Yes, yes, we understand. All I could think of was to get away from there. And uh, what did you do with the gun? Oh, I hid it in my purse. And then when the officer came, Arnie made me give it to him. I see. Well, that'll be all for a moment. If you wait in the next room. Certainly. How many people know we have the gun besides the officer and ourselves? Well, there's those two there, the taffy peddler and that flippity-tongued taxi pirate. Well, all of them as material witness. But the woman, the woman too. But she admitted hiding the gun in her purse. That makes her an accessory after the fact. I realize that, but I'm not interested in prosecuting a foolish woman for something she did in a moment of hysteria. Besides, I want to keep the defense guessing. Guessing about the gun until the trial. The moment we arrested her, they'd know why. Then his material witnesses and be the whole lot of them. And see that no word about the gun leaks out. Oh, I'll gag me, sir. So I don't blab in me sleep. Okay. There. Ah, good morning, Mr. Hittable. Yeah, lovely morning, sir. It's going to rain. Hmm? Well, so it is. Well, that'll be good for, for the, the crop. crop. How did you know I was going to say that? Well, you've been saying it every cloudy morning for the past 17 years. <laughs> oh, good morning, my dear. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning. Good morning, Marion. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Marion. How are you this morning, Miss Hittable? Poorly, Miss Blaisdell. When there's rain in the air, my I rheumatism gets get worse and worse. You shouldn't tease her like that, dear. You know she has no sense of humor. <laughs> oh, Marion. Yes? What is it? Alan Adams. Alan Adams. Jeff, what do you think of this? What? Harry West is going to be defended by Alan Adams. Well, that means we're in for a real battle. Where do you suppose West got the money to hire him? I've been wondering about that myself. I've been neglecting you terribly lately. Yes, you have. I was thinking of you. Were you? Here. No, what's this? At the pass of the trial, that you can see your husband to be opposed the great Alan Adams. Jeff, do you really believe that Harry West is guilty? Beyond any doubt. But, uh... But what? Well, the, the paper says Adams is confident. Well... I'm afraid the confident Mr. Adams is in for a surprise. Surprise? You'll see when you come to the trial. Oh. I'll be there, dear. I'll be there every day. Oh, that'll be fine. <laughs> the state paper feed. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, the contention of the state 
his attendants, shot and killed the Sally. I have no desire of involving this trial unnecessarily. I believe that the simple facts are sufficient to convince you beyond reasonable doubt. Call the first witness. Edward Pearson to the stand. And you're the head waiter? Yes, I'm the head waiter at the Thornton. On the night of the 18th, Mr. Norman, Mr. Maselli, and Miss Thane came into the restaurant. About a half hour later, a man came in and asked where they were. Is that man in the courtroom? Yes, that's the man. That's all? I saw that man come in, and I saw him leave. He was arguing with poor Mr. Maselli. I know him anywhere. Uh, Mr. West, I mean. Thank you. Your witness? Miss Watts, how many people came in the restaurant while you were there? I haven't the vaguest idea. Did I come in? I don't think so. Did the man with the long black beard come in? I don't know. Then why are you so certain Harry West was there? Because I saw a young lady stopping right by my table and arguing with him. On his way out? No, on his way in. Did you know the young lady? No, I just glanced at him. And you happened to glance at Mr. West when he went out? Yes. I suppose you could describe this young lady, the one you just glanced at. Oh, of course. She was wearing a gold embroidered before evening gown. It had puff sleeves, a square neckline, small bustles, and a gold metal cloth belt. It had a stable trim throw. All the hems were hand rolled. It was made out of ten and three eighths yards in the turret. <laughs> And you just glanced at this woman. Well, uh, How could you possibly tell how much material there was in the gown at the eighth of a yard? Because it was exactly like one I made for myself. That's why I glanced at it. <laughs> and now, Miss Watts, is this the lady? I have The attorney is leading the witness by direct inference. This thing. I rephrase my question. Do you see the young lady in the court? Your Honor, I did speak to a young lady, but she's not here and has no connection with this case. That's all, Miss Watts. Your Honor, I ask that the witness be instructed to answer that question. I withdraw my question. Your Honor, the witness will answer the question. What question? Do you see the young lady in the courtroom? Well... No, I don't believe that she's here. But I'd know the best if I saw it. That's all. I was on my way to the theater to sell my taffy. I saw him pull the gun and shoot Mr. Nacelli. Just like the taffy guy said, he didn't give him a chance. I've seen the whole thing. West had been drinking. It was very quarrelsome. He struck Nacelli, slipped out a gun and pulled the trigger. I heard a whistle blowing and I came a running. As I rounded the corner, I bumped into West. So I held him. Thank you. Your witness. When you caught Mr. West, did you search him? Yes, I did. Thoroughly? Yes, sir. Did he have any weapon on his person, particularly a gun? He did not. That's all. Your Honor? The state has established that the murder of Nacelli used a gun. Mr. West was captured within 200 feet of the Thornton entrance without any weapon. No gun has been introduced in court, and there has been no effort made, apparently, to find this weapon. Therefore, I demand an immediate dismissal. Why the state is prepared to call witnesses covering the point in question? The state may proceed. I'd like to offer, in evidence, this gun, and ask that it may be marked for exhibit. No objection. It may be so, Mark. Thomas Thane. Ellen Thane to the stand, please. Tell me, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Thank you, God. I do. What is your name, please? Evelyn Thane. Be seated. Thane, you were present at the time of the shooting. I was. Will you tell us in your own words what occurred immediately after the shot was fired? When the gun went off, I was frightened. Stunned. 
I didn't realize what had happened. And then Harry, Mr. West, thrust the gun into my hand. Is this the gun? I believe so, yes. Go on, please. And then he, Mr. West, ran off. Well, I was confused terribly. So I thrust the gun into my purse and hurried down the steps. Your Honor, Your Honor, I demand that this witness be placed under arrest as an accessory after the fact. Unless the state has promised her immunity in return for her testimony. I was nothing. Then I demand that she be placed in custody. Perhaps her story won't be so clear when she faces prison. Your Honor, I insist upon it. She's convicted herself. But she did it in a moment of hysteria. Your Honor. Silence. Bailey, place the witness under arrest. The court will now adjourn for a brief recess. Well, young man, I hope you realize what we're up against now. I do. If I put you on the stand, will you tell the jury the truth? I'll tell them I'm innocent. Will you tell them who you really are? No. Very well. Come in, Miss Courtney. Harry. What are you doing here? Oh, Harry, I... I sent for her. Get her out of here, please. Now, we've got to have an understanding, the three of us. You've risked this boy's life. He refuses to let me use what I know of his past. And if I put him on the stand, Powell will rip him apart on cross-examination. I refuse to answer. Exactly. And every man in that jury will think you're hiding something and they'll convict you. How much would it help if he did talk? I'd stand one chance in a thousand of getting him off with the life sentence. It's not worth it. Then I'll have to put her on the stand. I won't let you drag her name into this. Oh, Harry, please let I me. I'll into this. I'll do the pain. Oh, but listen, dear, I... Get her out of here. Please. Do you suppose Adams will put West on the stand? No, I doubt it. What were you doing in that room? Oh, Jeff, I... Uh... You were in there with Adams and West. I don't know. I wasn't. I saw you. Marion, that night at the Thornton, you wore a gold dress. I don't know what you're talking about. It was you who spoke to Harry West. Jeff, please. What have you to do with him? Why are you mixed up? I can't tell you. No, no. I've got to know. Jeff, please. Tell me what you mean to... I can't. You're quite right, sir. I fired chest bullets from the gun and compared them to the slug taken from the cellar's body. And as an expert on ballistics, it's your conclusion that this is the murder weapon. It is. Your witness? No question. That's all. Your Honor? Stay dressed. Your Honor? Gentlemen of the jury, the able attorneys for the state have called witnesses, presented experts, have shown you evidence in an attempt to prove Harry West's guilt. The defense has no witnesses, no experts, no circumstantial evidence. I believe my client. I believe this murder was cunningly planned and ingeniously executed in such a manner as to throw the blame on an innocent boy. My only defense will be the honest story of a young man. Call oh, Harry West. Harry West to the stand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. What is your name? Harry West. Be seated. Now, Harry, I want you to tell the jury exactly what happened that night. All right. I will. What Arnie, Mr. Norman, said about my being at the Thornton was true. I'd lost money to Mr. Nizelli. I wanted a chance to win it back. I'd been drinking, but not enough to, to do what they said I did. When we reached the door, Nizelli said, 
Look, Harry, meet us next week, and I'll kiss you in. And, and then he lunged against me as though Arnie had shoved him. And I grabbed him to help him get his balance, like anybody would. Then I heard a shot. He, he tried to hang on to me. Then he, he went down on the steps. Arnie pressed the gun against my side and said, Beat it, or I'll let you have it too. I was frightened. I ran. Arnie Norman killed him, not me. Your witness. No questions. recommendation for leniency. The court has no choice. <laughs> this is Don Hayes, your air reporter, coming to you with our noon broadcast of Worldwide News. Our first item is an echo of the sensational mystery man murder trial that ended last week in the death verdict of Harry West. Today, just five days after West's conviction, Evelyn Duchess Thane was found guilty as accessory after the fact and given a one to five year sentence in the Women's State Penitentiary. Now look here, Arnie. Steady, Duchess, but will you? you told me. Don't worry, you'll be taken care of. I'd better be. You will. Time's up, miss. So long. Well, why did she leave? Where did she go? She left this morning, Jeff. I helped her with her traveling arrangements. Did she know that I've been trying to see her ever since the trial? Yes. Well, then why wouldn't she give me just a minute? Perhaps she couldn't, Jeff. She asked me to give you this. Where does Marion's family live? She has a sister in San Francisco. Did she go there? No, Jeff. She didn't. Where did she go then? I can't tell you that, Jeff. Why? Because I promised her I'd tell no one. I see. Well, thanks. Goodbye. Lucille Bennett. 321 C building. Move on. Name? Oh, yeah, Bullich. 415 C building. Move on. Your name? Mary Court. Oh, Alice. Yes, sir. Haven't we one girl alone in a double cell? Evelyn Fane in B building. Put this girl in with her. What's your name? Mary Court. 519 B building. Move on. Name? Patsy. This is Mary Court. Will you introduce her to the others, please? Yes, Miss Butler. This is Patsy Ford. Glad to know you, Mary. Hello. This is Lois Summers. Hello. How do you do? This is your first trip? Uh-huh. Like to meet the club members? Hmm, love to. What's you up for? Buying things. Hot stuff? Hot checks. Sally McBride, this is Mary Coy. Hello. Hello, Sally. Recognize her? No. I had her pictures in all the papers. Three of her husbands came home at once. I found the other one there. Oh. Stella, this is Mary Coy. Stella Allen. Hello. Hello. Glad to meet you. Thanks. She's been here since the joint was a kindergarten. Every time they let her out, she said father something. Something she's insured. Oh. I'm glad she hasn't a policy on this place. 
say this joint ain't so bad. I've been in some war we saddled a cockroach and played polo. <laughs> What's your room number? 519. 519? Uh-oh. Well, she have fun. Oh, what's the matter with 519? You double with the Duchess. The Duchess? Yeah, that same day. She's only been here a week, but you think her father owned the joint. And her nothing but a gambler, sweetie. Give her half the chance and she'll run you ragged. Well, I cast phony checks in better banks than she has. Maybe I'll do a little running myself. Maybe, and maybe not. Presenting Her Highness, the Duchess. I'm Mary Court. How interesting. I thought so. Frostbitten. Isn't it funny how some people hit it off just like that? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we did. Hey, Arnie. Come here. Hello, Becky. I've been looking for you. Is that so? I haven't seen you since Nazelli's funeral. Oh, I've been around. Sure sad about him, huh? Too bad. I treat you, Fenton. Uh-huh. I backed him, you know. You did? Uh-huh. I used to pay his losings and, uh, split in on his winnings. So now I'm going around collecting a lot of loose change he had coming to him. Oh, I, uh, have your IOUs for, uh, let me see. $38,000. I guess that's about right. Yeah, sure, it's right. I'll see you about that in a couple of days, Packy, huh? You'll see me about it tomorrow at noon. Won't you, pal? Okay. Okay. Hello. Court. Yeah. Hand me that nail file. I said, hand me that nail file. You're as near it as I am. Court. One of us is going to be boss around here. Now hand me that nail file. All right. There's your nail file. Do you know that you might have... Sure, I might have. Are you crazy? No. But you see, I'd rather be friends than be boys. Oh. Well, let's be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send him right in. Hello. Have you any news for me? No, don't rush me. <laughs> Have you some trade over? You know the trouble with the general public, even them as ought to know better, including yourself, is in never telling the police all that you know. Uh -oh. <laughs> then you found me. I haven't set me eyes again. Uh -oh. But I do know where she is. And if you'd had the decency to tell me about her record, me buyers wouldn't have wasted so much good time. Record? Well, that girl hasn't any record. Oh, hasn't she now? Oh. Well, then maybe that ain't her. Why, well, it is Mary. Admit the record as long as you're arm under the name of Mary Court. Mary Court, me, Mary Court. Sentenced by Judge Blake. Oh. Well, this is a phony. It's a frame up. I guessed it. Oh, you did? I did. You know, girls, that pretty ain't such a prison. Not as long as judges and cops have got their eyesight. There. How does that look? Fine. 
Could you set a little deeper here? I'll try. Arnie likes it wave that way. It must be grand to have a big shot like Arnie Norman crazy over you. Enough to come clear up here on visiting day. He'd come further than that to see me, even if he didn't have to. Have to? Oh, well, uh, a little higher, right here. Ah, oh, I wish my boyfriend could come and see me. Why doesn't he? Same reason why I can't go and see him. He's in Joliet. Look, Mary, maybe I can get Arnie to help him. Arnie's got a lot of pull. Ah! Why the laugh? If Arnie's got so much drag, how come you're here? Maybe I won't be very long. You mean he's going to spring you? I'll tell you more about that after I see him. Oh. Your visit is here. Oh, I'll be ready in a minute. Mary's visitor. No, I'm not expecting any visitors. Come on. Mary. Yeah. I came here to find out what's going And you result. can go right back to your office. Because I don't want to hear anything you've got to say. I told you to stay away from me and I meant it. Oh, but Marion, what are you But that ought to be plain enough even for you. Hello, Miss Powell. Oh, hello, how are you? Who did you want to see? Miss Thames, please. Evelyn Thames. Well, who was your visitor? A snoop from the DA's office. What he wants. Can't you guess? Squeal on your friends and I'll help you, huh? Stick close to me, honey, and you won't have to turn pigeon to fly this coop. What do you mean? Arnie's getting awfully lonesome for me. When do we go? Ten tonight. Hi, Duchess. Hiya, Tommy. Didn't know you bring the front along. Oh, she's okay. Get in. Got a cigarette, Tommy? Thanks. Hey, am I seeing you before, baby? Don't tell me we went over Niagara Falls in the same barrel. No kip. Come on, Tommy, let's get going. Ouch! The coat in the car for you, Duchess. Oh, thanks. You better take this coat to hide that outfit. Okay. Mary Coy. Oh, oh, so you're Arnie Norman. Hello. Haven't I seen you before? Yeah, I saw you in the visiting room. Oh. 
I've seen this dame someplace else, boss, but I ain't sure yet where. But I'll get you, baby. I never forget the face. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't forget a face like yours, either. Careful, Arnie. She's got a boyfriend. Uh-huh. In Joliet. Oh, very convenient. What did you say? I said she could lay low here until the heat blows over. And maybe we can take her over the line with us. Over the line? Sure, you don't think I'm going to parade you around the city, do you? I'm not a good bear myself right now. Oh, Arnie, the police haven't learned. No, it isn't the cops. It's Nacelli's gang. They're trying to squeeze me on those IOUs. Oh, Arnie. Oh, they won't find me here, I guess. Still, never mind that. You kids are hungry, aren't you? Yeah, Dom. Tommy, have uh, left the toast something together, will you? Your clothes are over in the bedroom there. Thanks. Come on, kid. I'll loan you something with a little snap to it. Okay. There. How's that? Fine, thanks. Come in. Aren't you ready yet? Mary is. I'll be ready in a minute. Well, come on and have a cocktail with me while she finishes dressing. Sure, run along. Hey, you look swell in that outfit. I'm glad you like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the drink will go swell after that ride of yours. <laughs> thanks. Here's to freedom, Mary. To freedom, Mr. Norman. The name is Arnie. Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit down. Let them bring the coffee. Okay. Hey, you better sit down here. Thanks. There we are. Is that comfortable? Yes, thank you. Good. Don't I rate a drink? Sure. Say, Tommy, give the Duchess a drink, will you? Edward? Thanks, Tommy. They look well. They're not so bad. Cigarette, please. This is certainly grand of you, Arnie. Oh, don't mention it, baby. I'd like you to do me just one more favor, huh? Name it. Know me some clothes and a couple of dollars, and I'll be on my way in the morning. Uh-uh, nothing doing. You're staying right here. Well, if you insist... Hello, Jeffrey, my lad. Well, anything turn up? Have you located her? No, I haven't found your vanishing lady, friend. My hunch is that she's with the Duchess and Arnie Norman. Which might be anywhere, since Arnie can't be found. Yeah. You know, there's a rumor that Packy Lacey, with blood in his eye, is wearing out his arches looking for Arnie. Packy Lacey? Where does he fit in? Boy, that mother and blackguard of a racketeer put up all the money the late Mr. Nacelli gambled with. Oh, and uh, two and two makes... Twenty-two. He's over in my office now. Suppose we go over and have a bit of a talk with him. Well, sure, come on. I've told you a thousand times, I don't know where Arnie is. I wish I did. Why? He owes me a lot of dough, $38,000. He lost that in a cellar, didn't he? He owes it to me. Look, if you find him, tip me off, will you? If you should locate him first, would you let us know? Sure. After I get through collecting. All right, that's all. Uh-huh. Can I go now? On your way. Thank you. Did Arnie kill Natalie? You had wet sentence to burn for that, didn't you? Yeah, but why should I call your scratches? if he would let us know. He will, but he won't know it. Johnny boy, I want Packy Lacey's phone tapped and the man on his tail starting now. Now, Jeffrey, me lad, we've got the police and the crooks looking for Arnie. 
How can we miss? And to play the tree, Duchess. That's right. <laughs> Just what I needed. <laughs> you fathead. Now, Duchess. Well, I'm sick and tired of being cooped up here playing that idiot's delight. Well, why don't you try making yourself useful like Mary? Come on, let's dance. All right. How about the first one with you, Mary? Oh, well, not now, honey. I promise that's not helping. Oh, he can wait. Oh, but really? Okay, Duchess. Why, you... <laughs> I don't see why you off the Duchess. She's got too much on Oh. And that Mary Dane, too. Someday I'm gonna place her. Yeah, in the wrong place. That girl's all right. I knew a lot of guys said that about Dane. Yeah? Yeah. Now they're wearing numbers. No, no, not that way. Tuck it in. Like this. I never knew there was so much to it. Most men don't. Now take your coat off that set and I'll fix the lining for you. You oughtn't to take all this trouble, not for me. I like to. There's a needle and thread on the dresser. You ought to get away from here. Why? That Arnie Norman, he's bad medicine. Then why are you staying? Well, I... I'm too old to make a change. But I wouldn't want my kid to... I mean that... Lester, is this your son? Yeah. Kind of clean looking, ain't he? Yeah, he is. I ain't seen him since uh, since he was little. I don't even know where he is now. You know, a fella can't be so awfully bad if he's got a son like that. Sometimes a man can undo a lot. Not everything. Yeah, but something. Yeah, if he tries to make it up by doing one big thing. Something you wanted, Tommy? Yeah. You know, I've been trying to think where I've seen you. Now I got it. Yeah? Yeah. It was, uh... Nah. That dame was a blonde. Yeah? Oh, put him up. Hello? Jeffrey Lab. Our friend Packy just had a phone call. Annie Norman is hiding upstate. And I have the address right here before me. All right, hold everything. I'll be right over. Yes, we got to be careful. We might put her in danger. Right, but... Uh, I'll give me the address. I'll find out what I can alone. Alone? Nothing. I'll go along with you. And we'll put the electric ear on. Fine. Come on. But, Arnie, I, I don't quite get you. Well, it's like this, baby. I'm looking forward to big things with you and the Duchess to lead the sucker down. Oh, Arnie. Yeah? Come here. Close the door. You and I have a little talking to do. Have we? When are you going to get rid of her? Oh, no, you wouldn't want me to kick a friend of yours out just when... Don't pull that. I've been watching you. So what? If you know what's good for you. Oh, that sounds like a threat. Maybe it is. So you'd better tell her to pack up. <laughs> We're all packing up tonight. All of us? Mm -hmm. You mean you're going to take her along? Oh, she might be useful. All right. Take her and leave me. Now, that's an idea. But remember, if I talk... <laughs> Same old Duchess. 
can't take a little kidding, huh? Not from you, Arnie. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll drop her off someplace outside the hot zone. Then you and me over the border, huh? You mean it? Sure I do. <laughs> Gee, Arnie, you can be the grandest fellow when you want to. <laughs> but if you ever try to double-cross me... Why, Duchess? Come on, snap out of it. I've got to go to the city. What for? Get the bankroll out of the safety deposit boxes. Okay. See you later. Bye. That ought to be the place. How about using that barn for a listening post? Oh, that's perfect indeed. Barney Norman in the flesh. We can get the mic planted while he's gone. Oh, but there'll be others in the house there. We'll have to take a chance. Come on. There you are, all ready to go. How can I get this thing inside the place? You don't have to. Anywhere again the outside will do. But better still could you get it for next to Windy. <laughs> Why, the devilish thing is sharper ears than my wife. Okay. Uh, but, Jeffrey, just in case you might get plugged, don't you think you'd better leave me the two cigars you got left? <laughs> You're a cheerful cousin. Good luck, me by. Doesn't look like a murderer, does he? No, no, he doesn't. Read it to me, will you, while I finish putting those things away? Harry West, the mystery man killer, will go to his death at dawn tomorrow. This was made a certainty when the governor refused the plea of Adam. That boy, he looks young enough to be your son, doesn't he? Yes. Lester, that boy isn't going to the jail. No? No, because you're going to the police with me. Police? To admit that you helped him, Harry West. You're from headquarters, then. You're I don't have him. I don't have to stay in the jail. I wouldn't dare. I'm you'd kill me. He's a protection. They'd arrest me for lying at the trial. I'll give you a break if you try to say that. He's a smart gal. No, no, I can't double-cross Arnie. They're going to double-cross you. They're going over the line tonight without you. Lester, that boy might have been your son. And he's going to the chair because you lied. Arnie, he made me do it. He made me. Lester, I'm going to the police, alone if I must, and tell them what I know. Come with me and I'll help you. Stay here and you'll be caught with the rest. Well? Oh, uh -huh. I'm afraid. Oh, I wish your son could see you now. I'll go with you. Come now, quick, before Arnie gets back. Now I know you're a little stupid. Pigeon, put him up. Okay, next week. 
Just packy lazy. You two behave yourself and you won't be hurt. Where's Arnie? He went to the city. All right, get inside. Go on, get inside. I'm going over there. Sit down, Jeffrey lad. Everything's under control. You know, there's a feeling I have what with Packy on the job. We'll learn plenty when Arnie gets back. Well, maybe you're right. I'm sorry I have to do this, girls. No hard feelings. I wonder if, uh, what was that? Stand up! Come on. In there. Drop that gun. Drop it. And you. Come on. Now get in there. One thief out of you, I'll blow you wide open. That guy was going to squeal the cop. That double crossing thing. I know. I spotted the listener. I stock him. Save it. Save it. We've got to blow quick. Where are the girls? In there. Oh. Take it easy, Jeffrey. You know, the program don't start until Arnie gets back. No, but this waiting gets on my nerves. Yeah. Well, you'd get on mine if I had any. It's just lucky for you I like your cigar. Are you sure there's nothing wrong with this machine? Oh, well, just to keep you easy, I'll check and make sure. All right. Our tin winch has kicked the bucket. Can you fix it? Well, I don't know. It is colder than me wife's feet. The cops are wise to it. We've got to beat it. Wait for me in the car. I knew you'd come back. Sure. Where's Packy? What happened? Plenty. I got wise to a few things. How'd he find out where we were? Probably from your friends, the cops. My friends? Go ahead, talk your head off. I just fixed their microphones. Why, well, Arnie, what do you mean? Tommy tipped me. You little double-crosser. Arnie, you're wrong. Listen. 
They'll be here in a few minutes. And how sorry they'll be to find that you've committed suicide. Aye! Goodbye, Duchess. Norman where he belongs, in the chair. from the woman. We have the real murderer under arrest. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Goodbye. Well, Marion, everything's all right now. Harry West will be a free man by the end of the week. Thank you, Jeff. And now I can tell you the truth about him. Well, you don't need to. I think I know. No, you don't, Jeff. You see... Harry disgraced his family, left home, changed his name. I went in search of him. I see. I promised his father not to reveal Harry's identity until I found him and made certain he'd changed. Then charged with murder. Harry wouldn't let me tell anyone his real name. Harrison. Well, I hope you and Mr. Harrison will be very happy. But Harrison's his first name. First name? Yes. Harrison Courtney Jr. He's my brother. Good. Yeah. Your brother? Yes. Oh. Oh, Mary. Will you look at the shameless creatures? And after just getting out of one bad accident. Accident? This is no accident. They're doing this with malice aforethought. 